through two games, uh, how would you evaluate the progress of, of kids you know about and maybe some of the kids you don't know as much about are playing for contracts possibly? Well, it's been an interesting two games, sort of uh, covered both ends of the spectrum in terms of the way the, the team has played yesterday, obviously missing some of the more veteran guys. I mean, the, the purpose of this whole weekend, and I, I know it's the first, they're the first games that we're playing, and people want to analyze them as though they're game 82 of their NHL regular season, but they're, they're a tool of analysis for us to watch the young guys play. And, um, you know, the, the first game, a lot of, obviously a lot of guys stood out. Willie stood out and Victor, Victor Love and so on and so forth. But we, we're just trying to get a, a sense of where these guys are at and, and make decisions of who's going to go on to main camp uh, on Thursday. What are you looking for specifically when you're watching the game? Are you focusing on players individually or the game as a whole and who stands out? I, I think you're, it's, it's just scouting. Uh, you're, you're watching the game to see you know, guys that, that play the way that, that we want to play or guys that could fit in. Uh, we, we have, as a staff, we know the, the players on, that, are, that are in action that, we're, uh, that we need to key on to make decisions on. And that's really the main focus of this weekend. I mean, we, we know it. at this point after all these years, especially having been in the Sioux with David Broll, we, we know what, what, what David brings. And you, you want to take time to look at guys like Carter Verhage, who's you know, had it coming off a great season and signed and, and give them some opportunities. This is a talent pool that you've kind of inherited. Um, you don't have your fingerprints on a lot of these players, but what do you make of the talent pool here? I, it, to me, it's it's been exciting. It's just been an exciting chance to get to know uh, some of these uh, some of these players who who I didn't before. Uh, the OHL guys I was uh, extremely familiar with, but uh, the rest of the players that are that are been that have been here with us, uh, I didn't know all too well. So uh, this is it's still in the infancy of, uh, of evaluating them. It's only been two games and, and a practice, so long way to go yet. But I've I've been excited by uh, by a number of the players. It's. Uh, Looking forward to seeing uh, practice today, one more game, and then on to main camp. Couple of guys, you guys you might know pretty well. You talk about uh, Matt Finn and, and Connor Brown and, and sure. what you see here and what you know of them in the OHL. Well, Matt had a, has obviously had a prolific uh, career in Guelph. Uh, we were not on the uh, strong side of that too often in the Sioux, playing against Matt and, and playing against uh, the Storm. And you know, for, for him, you know, he's, he's proven himself over his time in the, in the OHL to be a really strong prospect. Uh, and it's exciting to be on the same side as him versus uh, versus having him uh, torch us in, in the Sioux with the storm. So that's that's been good. And Connor Brown, uh, you know, Connor McDavid's a great young player, but in the Sioux in the playoffs, we got we got beat by Erie last year, and Connor Brown was uh, was a big part of that. I mean, everyone talks about his prolific offense, but on the penalty kill, I think you see last night his ability to. To tip that puck, and there's not many guys I don't think that can that can do that, position themselves and get in and, and get there. So, uh, I'm I'm very familiar with them as as players, and the, the, I'm just getting to know them now as people. They both seem to be great character guys, so it's it's uh, it's been exciting for sure. Do you think this would be a good season, a good time for Connor Brown if if he goes pro, plays with the Marlies, uh, to, to show that he's more than just Connor McDavid's teammate. Like he's he's got a lot to himself to offer. I, I think so. well. I mean, that's that's a, that's something that a lot of those guys carried around. I mean, you can go back to Ramuski and Brad Richards and Vincent LeCavalier, and it's that that's always a common theme. I think in hockey, when you have two very good players on the same team, everyone wants to kind of say, well, this is the guy that that carries the load, and this guy's just hitching his his wagon on to the. Uh, onto the engine here, but I mean, Connor's a very good player. And last year, I think especially when we played them in the series, Erie versus the Sioux, um, it was very noticeable to me that, you know, especially on the penalty kill, he was he was outstanding. And Connor McDavid wasn't on the ice with him. He brings a lot as a player, and a lot of people always try to doubt Connor Brown. Um, and I think he's got a, he still has a lot of room to grow on his frame. He's, he's going to be a very good player. Can you talk about the chance you've extended to Finley and Watland? Sure. Well, I'm obviously really familiar with them. They're both from Sault Ste. Marie and uh, both played uh, on our teams there when I was there. Uh, Finley, I, I thought, has been really, really good the first uh, the first two games. Uh, he has an ability to make plays, and uh, you know, the, in the at the end of it, that's that's what it's all about. He can make plays and create offense. He's worked extremely hard here and and uh, had a good camp. And uh, Watling uh, last year for us in the Sioux was one of our better players, and he's played with speed. He's he's in really good shape, works hard and, and smart, and it was a great penalty killer for us last year, and uh, has has brought that into the first two games here. And and um, I'm excited to have it. He always, uh, you know, people always. Be, can get critical of what you're, you're bringing people that are familiar, but you know what they can bring. I'd, I'd rather go with with the with guys like that than than the opposite.
Not having to share in Orlando, how important is that in terms of placing players given how crowded that Marley situation might be? Uh, I think the one thing that, that I always find interesting is that people kind of look at the ECHL and they, they cringe when you send players there. I think it's a great opportunity and Orlando is a great organization. Their, their facilities are, are top notch in that league and uh, I'm, I'm excited about uh, developing that, that con furthering that connection with them. They, they wanted to move to one affiliate system and, and saw us as a, as a good partner and, and I think it's, it's a great opportunity for us to have a great relationship there. And, Seem to have that, you know, more of an opening rather than have guys sitting out and have them playing. Gord and I have talked about it a lot uh, uh, in terms of our plan for players, and, and to have that option and a good option for our players is, is hugely important. Kyle, we've counted, I think, nine or ten guys that could possibly start on the defense with the Marlies. Is that is that a nice problem to have when you have that many young guys who are capable of playing at that level? It's always a, having a lot of good players is always the best problem in uh, in hockey. So. Uh, that's that's what we're trying to do, and Dave Morrison and the staff have, have done a good job, and, and now it's just trying to figure out where they fit. The guys need to play and play a lot, and that's our that's our goal with them. So we've, we've got the option with Orlando and, and the Marlies, and of course with the, with the big clubs, so it'll be interesting to see how that evolves. Is that still a strength in the organization, you think, uh, the defense? Obviously a lot of high picks have come from the back end, and a lot of Swedes have, right. like we saw Victor's play last night, and right. Tom Nielsen's looked impressive. Is that still you think a uh, strength of the organization right now? From what I've seen, just trying to get familiar with it, I, I think it is a it is a strength, definitely. I mean, we've got guys like like Morgan Riley and Jake Gardner already playing. They're young guys, and you've got you've know, seen out here. You've got Victor Love, and and you have Tom Nilsson, and uh, you've also got guys like Peter Granberg, Stuart Percy. We haven't even talked about them. They're they're not even here. Uh, so that's. You know, and, and Dave uh, and myself and Brendan and, and our staff have talked about it a lot. That's there's a lot of guys that are going to push. I think everyone tries to, to to make that competition in main camp about one or two players. But it's there's a lot of guys there that that'll that'll battle for that for that spot with the Leafs, and that'll reverberate on down. Any decision yet on Nylander tomorrow playing? Or? Rest until main camp. Or? I don't believe he's going to play tomorrow. No, that may that of course can change. Yeah. We've got some guys that are dinged up a little bit, but I don't. I think he'll be out tomorrow. There's like the, the last year with Morgan Riley kind of followed that same line of thought, and yeah. I mean, we we know what he brings. He's he's a good player. Just Can get him against it. Gauthier will also probably sit because of the injury. Gauthier will be out. Yeah. yeah. Can Connor still be the same type of player at the next level, or does he kind of have to grow? And then evolve. Like we saw Dave Bowen, prolific junior scorer, evolve. Does, does he sure. need to go through the same sort of thing, or do you have to just kind of see? I, I think every player has to evolve, and they have to find their way. Uh, he he can. He's a highly skilled player that can I know can already kill penalties because he was part of one of the best penalty killing uh, crews in 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 the OHL in Erie last year, and he got great coaching there. Uh, he he has a lot of skills. I think because of. I think with Connor, because in his draft year, Erie uh, struggled a bit and his plus minus was so bad that that, that gets tagged along with him. I, I hate plus minus, but I think that that's, that's a prime example of why. It gets tagged along with him all the way as, oh, he's, like, he, oh, he's not a good defensive player because his plus minus was minus whatever it was in his draft year. But since then, he's been one of the better all-around players in our league, and his ability on the penalty kill is already a facet and dimension to his game that I'd never hear anybody talk about. But it's already, I think, you see that evolution as as he as he turns pro now. Sorry.